Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about judging JavaScript programmers. So let's get into it. So basically the question in question here was that, well, well, the person wanted me to, uh, to just give a few example questions that I could, you know, example questions of how you could judge how good a person is at JavaScript programming. And uh, um, yeah, I have a few of these. See, the problem with judging a person who, uh, how good a person is at JavaScript programming it very much comes down to how good your own understanding is of programming and JavaScript development yourself, because it's such a, 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 it's so rare to find people who are truly good at JavaScript development that most people, like even if I give you these answers, it's, uh, it doesn't really, it's very hard to interview a person today and figure out if they are good at JavaScript because most people themselves are not very good at JavaScript because, you know, it doesn't give, it hasn't gotten the sort of attention that needs to be given to this language. Uh, but I will, I will give you answers that you, nobody's going to probably be able to use in a, uh, in a technical interview anyway. And it's very unlikely that somebody's going to ask you this, but it's from my perspective, the things that may matter the most. So the first question I would ask a person who is going, if I'm going to figure out how good they are at JavaScript development would be to ask, what are the main problems of front-end development and how do you solve those problems? Now, the reason why I wanted it, and I want this question first and foremost is because most people who are junior developers, as an example, they have no idea what problems, the, like the true problems of front-end development. They, they won't even be able to start answering this question. And you will very quickly figure out how experienced a person is with this sort of development based on, like if they're more experienced, a more experienced profile, based on the reply that they give. I mean, there are many answers to this question. There is no wrong answer, but the depth of the answer is going to give you give away quite a lot about how good that developer actually is. An example is that if they find it hard to do something like, I mean, it's how to how can I give a bad example of this? That's tricky. You know, to keep the code clean or something like that, that's absolutely a good answer, but it's it's not very in depth. An example of, in my world, a good answer is to say something like you're dealing with the DOM like do in an efficient manner, or dealing with state man like state management is one answer to this uh, as well. And then you have other considerations such as legacy building up very quickly, having issues with tooling or page weight, page load times things of this nature, and then the sustainability, of course, of the project, like how, how well it's going to stay, like how well are you going to keep it right uh, over time, because JavaScript rots faster than any other programming language. So here it basically comes down to trying to listen and understand the, like, because you can often very clearly hear if the person has considered the things that are necessary in order to make a big JavaScript project a success or like to actually succeed in front end overall. Because I mean, if they say that, oh, I think CSS is kind of hard. Yes, CSS is hard, but it's then you might have to ask a few follow up questions of what specifically is hard about CSS, because if just getting CSS correct is a difficult thing then it's probably that they have less experience if they find if their answer on the other hand is that it's very hard to keep CSS scalable over time because you very quickly get to a point where bad decisions or ad hoc decisions at one point starts to snowball on you and you need to you don't you simply don't have the time to fix things in a nice way so basically it means that you, css is the sort of thing where you almost always have to write things perfectly on the first try because if you don't it's very likely that people will start hacking it together and depending on experience level there will they will 
kind of point out to you that that's a culture issue and like a more it's more of a practices issue than it is a problem with CSS. But if the answer is, as I said, just that CSS is tricky, it's likelier that they have a less they have less experience, right? So that's going to be the first really good question. But as I said, like this is there's no like objective definitive answer here. It's more about just trying to hear somebody out and figure out based on uh, what they say how much experience they actually do have. The second question I would ask is how do you scale a large JavaScript project from a small like what considerations do you have to have at me at a real at large scale or like going up to a large scale in development that you may not need at a smaller scale and how do you solve the issues or what are the issues and how do you solve those issues so this is also something that I think is fairly relevant to ask because one this is the pro this is the problem with JavaScript. Nobody thinks that JavaScript is hard when you have maybe a hundred or two hundred or even up to five, say five hundred lines of code of JavaScript. Nothing is hard in JavaScript. Uh, rather, that's you know the people who don't think JavaScript is hard is uh, are the people who are working at that scale. When you have over ten thousand lines of JavaScript and maybe around a hundred different dependencies or at least 50 dependencies and libraries and different practices and you have maybe 30 plus or like quite a lot more people let's say even, even hundreds of people working on a code base then you start seeing the problems with javascript for real that this is where the scaling problems actually come in and a person who has never done this will not have a good answer to this either but you mean there are varying range to, to experience here of course uh, usually the things that come as an issue here is that it's very hard with the loosely typed language to keep things consistent to be sure that the values that you pass in are actually the things that you expect it's very easy just a culture problem that you have is that people treat JavaScript usually with a lot less respect than they treat other programming languages so it's very common that you very quickly get legacy code because people hack things together or they don't code review correctly things like that and that they basically that's a culture thing they basically treat JavaScript with less respect other things that will come is that you will have a suite of many, many like varying different, like tons of tools that increases the page when page load. This doesn't have to just be in front end; it can be in Node as well. You have a system that is maintained by a lot, as I said, a bunch of people who treat it with less respect than it's due, and don't follow good pra proper practices that are relevant in other languages, or like that way we do uh, the way we do it in other languages. And the code starts rotting to the point where, you know, it's not just about the quality of the code, it's uh, all of the different dependencies and all the different practices that you use because you don't standardize on something. And that's a culture thing, as I said. Other things will include like bundle times with Webpack. Uh, the more code you have, you will often see that you have performance problems with larger projects. That is something that you need to consider. And how do you solve that? That's a different video but it's definitely going to be a problem. And then lastly, I would probably ask something along the lines of which approach do you prefer in general to use when you're writing software? Do you, are you an object-oriented person or a functional person? And this is basically because I know that these days most people who have just started getting into JavaScript these days, they will be on, most a lot of them are on the functional hype train, and that is just an indicator on for how experienced they they're actually they actually are, because the problem with functional programming and the trend that you have today is that it's um, it's as with many trends. It becomes the entire perception of the person who uh, who starts out in recent time. You get so persuaded by all of the positive arguments for functional programming that you don't actually realize that in JavaScript, a lot of these practices that functional programming promotes, although they are useful, not all of them are all that relevant and useful in JavaScript. And that's something that people don't really consider. And the other approach, uh, other perspective is, and I've had quite a lot of people 
who come in the door who have no real understanding of something as simple as the basics of object-oriented programming. So I actually have had situations, I never thought I would see the day where I would work with a programmer who doesn't know basic object-oriented programming, no understanding of inheritance or anything like that, which is something that comes when you only work in this on this low end scale of JavaScript development. You know, it's also very common in PHP, where self-taught programmers who have no real understanding of the more advanced, con well, the, the basics of software development, they start learning the coding, but they don't actually learn the practices that come with the necessary, the, they don't learn the necessary skills to work at more complicated projects. So having an answer to this question is, like, or having somebody try to answer this question and having follow-up questions regarding it is a very useful thing to figure out basically if like, the experience level of this person. Now a more experienced profile will, be, will often just give you the, my favorite answer, which is to say that it depends because it always depends. There are situations where a functional approach to a problem is more efficient than an object-oriented solution and the reverse is also true. And just hearing that person reason about, you know, okay, what circumstances, what examples can you give to when this is true and when it's, you know, when it's applicable is a very good way of figuring out how experienced somebody is. So yeah, those are gonna be my answers. So what I want you to take away from this is that for me, when I want to figure out how good somebody is at JavaScript, the first thing I wanna know is what they think are the main problems of front-end development and how to solve those problems. The second thing I wanna know is what are the main considerations and the issues that you face when you try to work on a really large code base of JavaScript. What do you like? What what are the issues and how do you solve those issues? Thirdly, I want to know what approach they they favor when they write code. Are they a functional person or an object-oriented person? Or like what like style of coding do they use? And these questions are often a very quick way to figure out roughly how good somebody is with JavaScript and programming in general. Have a great day.